But, uh, you know, and then everybody in Scientology, not everybody, so that's a generalization. I'll give you people. Uh, Marty Rathbun, uh, Susan Watson, Dave Pettit, a uh, couple of RTC terminals. People said, well, he's a, he's a 1-1 one -one SP. Okay? In other words, trying to destroy my relationship with him. And it affected our relationship. 1-1 one -one is a... Is, is, is a is a, is a, is a definition is a covertly hostile. Hey, man, I'm your friend. I really am. You fuck. You know, that's covertly hospital. Covertly hospital. And, um, and so uh, one of the first things I did, I mean, you know, we'd stay in communication, but the further I got in, like that. And that's a loss, you know, let alone my family. You know, no, but my family, you know, shit, they don't fuck with me or anything, you know, but I've never been closer now that I'm out, you know, because they weren't into it. They, 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 everybody was totally respectful of me. Nobody ever said, you know, my mother said one thing once, you know, I just don't think it, you know, allows for the grace of God or something. That was the all, something, you know, because she's a big Christian thing. Of course, I whipped out the whiz book and I gave her the right answer and handled her. You know, but the uh, uh, the thing with Dave, this is just the other thing when I was thinking about the, I was laughing is, is uh, as I, I got out, when I got out, one of the first people I went to go see was David. And, uh, you know, his whole family was out of town and, and I was just moving here and now we live in the same city. And, uh, and so I went over to his house and, uh, you know, we we're just walking around and, uh, and we talked about it a little bit, just a little bit, you know, because I just said, oh, by the way, and I said, oh, okay. So we started to talk a little bit about, like, you know, OT levels and stuff like that, you know. And, you know, he doesn't watch South Park or whatever the fuck, but, you know, he doesn't know this whole, so, uh, you know, what is that, you know, what is the, you know, what, what were you into, why, why, what is the OT, or, you know, or so, I don't know what, if he asked, the question, but somehow I went and I, explained to him and here I am you know just kind of just kind of basically it just walked out the door and and it did so much for me but I started to explain to him the story of Zeno and the loyal officers and I tell you fuck me <laughs> I mean I couldn't get a third of the way through the story and we had our faces on the floor we were laughing so hard I mean you couldn't even talk you was just because it's so it's retarded it's insane. It's what was funny. your reaction, though, when you saw the packet with the info? How did you react? Well, that's the other thing. I got to say, I mean, like I had told you earlier, I had, I had been on a spiritual journey long before Scientology. This data is, is just, it's, it's, it's as different as the word Thetan is different from the word spirit. It's about that different. I mean, the Bible talks about the devil and demons. Uh, it's nomenclature. Uh, the, you know, entities is what they talk about in these New Age religions. Uh, so this, all that stuff about Thetans, uh, I mean, it was a little because I was in Scientology heavily, so I was a little bit like this. But I thought, okay, and I, I remember that was my thought. I said, okay, well, that's obviously, it wasn't that big of a surprise to me. And I just thought, it, it's like one of those moments, now that I look back and really look at it, there was a moment where I could have woken up there. But you choose not to, and that's part of the reason why Scientology is expensive, you know. Well, if you're paying a lot of money for it, it makes it more valuable, and you give it more. It's like I was just listening to the fucking radio today. There's this guy. He was working at MTV, and they were uh, in New York. This is just on NPR today, this guy, and, uh, and he was on this art channel on NPR. And uh, he was working at MTV, and they were talking about uh, packaging and marketing and how important it is. And the guy, and, and, and he was talking and saying it was important and that it was, this other guy said, it's not that important. He said, bullshit. And they had a little bit of an argument and he said, well, let me see, let me show you something. And he went and he was in New York and he went and he grabbed a little garbage 
and he put them in little plastic boxes and he put a little stamp on them and dated them and signed the, you know, and numbered them and he's selling them for 50 bucks each as art. Started as 10 bucks as just, a, and it was like a little gift, but now that they're up there 50 and 100 bucks each, the people are actually calling them art. So it's an interesting thing. So it, again, it's your own, it's, you're driving the car. It's just that you don't realize that the car as a Scientologist, because you're in the trap, it's got a pre-rigged route. It's called the bridge. And so you feel like this is this easy life. I just got to sit here and the car basically drives itself. All I got to do is show up at the church and I'll be happy. And there you are. And you're on the bridge to total freedom. To total freedom. Yeah, they free you from yourself. That's one of the brutally I'm, ironic things about Scientology when they have a slogan called Think for Yourself. Yeah. And you find yourself thinking exactly what Scientology wants you to think. It seems. No, but you're doing it yourself. That's why it's pretty good. I mean, it's really insidious. It's, it's quite, a, it's, it's so bold and bald-faced that, you know, you just would never suspect it. You know? It's another, reminds me, you remember those, I used to smoke cigarettes. And, uh, so I was smoking cigarettes and I wanted to quit and I couldn't quit and I'm smoking, smoking. And then these new cigarettes came out uh, from American Spirits. And I say, and they're supposed to be all natural, right? And the fucking thing on it, it said addictive free. And I said, bullshit. So I start smoking and I'm down to like two cigarettes a day. And I'm like fucking disseminating the shit out of these things. They're the best cigarettes in the world. And I'm telling everybody, these are addictive free. I'm hardly smoking at all. I say, look, it's addictive free. It says, that's not, it says additive free. And I went right back to a pack a day. So it's the same kind of, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a, uh, it's, it's a, it's, it's, you know, you're, you're, you're playing the game by yourself. It's a, it's a, it's a mental well, it's, I don't think it's fair to say by yourself because uh, there's, it seems like this entire structure of Scientology is built one, to, to funnel you onto the bridge and keep you on the bridge. Yes, yes, and those people, those people that I suspect, again, I'm not an expert, and this is some of the things, this is one of the things that I can't fully confront yet. I can say that in my opinion that the lion's share, at least, at least, well over 99% of your Sea Org people are the truest of the true believers, okay? So they are really there to, to they're trying to help you, and they'll, they'll not take no for an answer. It's like, you know, your son wants to touch the stove, and, you know, you're willing to physically stop him, even though he's sure that he wants to, to see that beautiful blue thing that's dancing there and touch it, right? And maybe even put his hair in it or something, you know what I mean? He doesn't know what fire is. They are willing to give their lives, practically, to keep you on the bridge. Because this is for your own good. So, um, uh, but they are doing, it, it, that's just one individual. And that individual is, is doing his job. He's, there's not a lot of them that need to be told to get up in the morning. They're on autopilot too. But the whole group is uh, it becomes, you know, this, this living, breathing thing. And the thing that I, I, I haven't quite confronted is I can't quite see what the fuck anybody gets out of it. Like, you know, is COB, does he want $300 million? Is that what it is? Does he want a billion dollars? And COB is David Miscavige. David, I mean, is that it? Is it uh, just his power hard on? Is, you know, I, or is it just insanity? You know, I mean, I wonder, is LRH, was he just crazy? You know, there are people, I mean, maybe he was an SP, you know, whatever. Oh, but I don't know. I mean, the jury's out for me. I haven't, like I said, I can't confirm. I don't see what the fucking, like, if I wanted money, I know for me, if I wanted a billion dollars or something like that, I couldn't do that. That wouldn't be a way for me to, I, you see what I'm saying? I wouldn't, I couldn't do it. I, I'd probably kill myself, you know what I mean? I just couldn't live with myself like that. I certainly couldn't look my son in the eye. You know what I mean? But that's me, and maybe that's me, PTS. Maybe I'm fucked up. Maybe that's my conscience, whatever the fuck that is. But do you see what I'm saying? I, I don't know. I, I, I haven't quite had that confront of, 
truth or evil, depending on what you want. But I don't know what the fuck anybody wants out of it. Well, what's your, what's your whoever's who's get like all this money is a big thing. Where does it go? Well, we see uh, recently there was a video released of uh, Tom Cruise's birthday aboard the Free Winds, and and I understand that there was six figures spent on the birthday party for Tom. And that's parishioners' money going to keep Tom Cruise happy. Well, they, they figure that's worth it. You know, yeah. they, you know, according to him, he brings it. He brings in just him being Tom Cruise. Per their viewpoint, he probably brings in a hundred thousand a day for this church in terms of interest and positive public relations, and you know, so uh, six figures ain't dick. Right. You know, uh, that you know, it's certainly. You could throw a party for him every day and it wouldn't really put a dent in their bank account. So I don't know what the, you know, a party, you know, people like to get mad at COs who take these big things and, and Tom Cruise is party and there was some, the, the fucking free winds is, let me tell you, is a flea bag. I mean, it's a, it's not a fucking nice boat, you know. I mean, I've been on that thing. I got seasick every time. So. But speaking of Tom Cruise, you were talking earlier about uh, your your, <laughs> your uh, identity being stripped and being replaced with that of Scientologist, and certainly you can see that in Tom Cruise and in, in well, the I mean, recent I can't videotape speak for Tom that was Cruise. released. I mean, I, I mean, I, yeah, but I would suspect that that's what's happened, you know. And he was off for a while, and uh, you know, he's in gung ho. You know, I'm sure he went through a big ethics cycle and woke up, you know, because he probably had some trouble with his wife and he found his ruin. You know, I think he's probably, I mean, I would just, maybe his, he has trouble with girls or something like that. You know, that might be his whatever. I don't know. Anyway, he's. But at, at any rate, he seems like the, you know, idea, uh, ideal of what a Scientologist should be. I mean, dedicated. Well, I was in there. You know, COB called me the poster boy for Scientology. I was, I was as gung-ho as you could get. How did it turn around for you? Why, why did you start to uh, doubt? Well, uh, it's, it's, uh, it uh, not only didn't work anymore, the more auditing I did, which I was more and more encouraged to do, the worse I got. I was starting to go fucking crazy. And uh, it was fucking me up. How far up the bridge did you go? I'm a class five, OT5. I've done all my L's. Done a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call those fucking things? You know, all those other courses, data series things and blah, blah, blah. One of the things, you know what's interesting to me? There was a big thing about maybe two years ago or a year and a half ago that everybody wanted you to listen to your congresses which is uh, the, all the, the uh, Congress was this, you know, meeting that LRH had starting in 19, early 60s, and he would get a group of people together and he would give a series of lectures on X. And usually it was about, it all really had to do with clearing, because all these, the Congresses were having to do with clearing. And, uh, and I, uh, well, let me give you a, Remember that I'm talking about the Congresses. I'm going to give you the unabridged version. Is that okay? Sure. You sure? We have time. Okay. Um, when I was in that TRs course, um, my very first week in Scientology. Now, again, I'm an actor, so you know, communication is something I kind of do for a living. So, and that's a whole course about communication. So, I felt like I'm pretty good at this naturally. And one of the exercises is. Uh, you take a, they use Alice in Wonderland, which has got full of these wild kind of uh, sentences, and you take it and you, you read it to yourself and then you deliver it as your own. That's a TR1. TR2 is properly acknowledge somebody. So they say off with your head and you say thank you to make sure they know it and end it. And there's all these other things. Now, here I was doing this TR. It was happened to be TR2. And somebody said off with your head. And I said, my God. And they flunked me. And I said, why? And they said, you know, because you're showing, uh, you know, it's supposed to be just thank you, good, whatever. I said, no, read the fucking thing. It says appropriate acknowledgement. If somebody says off with your head, the, why do you think he chose Alice in Wonderland? And they bring the technical, the head technical person in the fucking place, and they're all invalidating the shit out of me, and I'm sticking to my guns. I finally am crying. I said, you guys are fucking wrong. 
Who the fuck talks like that? Thank you. I got it. Okay. Good. Wow. That would be way too much. Wow. Okay? I totally duplicate that. This is the way you're supposed to talk. I'm really talking to you, but do you see how I'm not? So it's there. I'm doing, this is perfect in terms of their idea. All right, I got it. Okay, so that's really, that was good TRs. wasn't excellent. Excellent TRs is more like this. You know, you're really conversational, but I'm not moving, and I'm really looking at you, and I'm ready for everything, and I don't blink, and I'm not really, your eyes stink, okay? So it's that kind of fucking deal. Some gum wore Sue up. Anyway, the, um, that's just a private joke. Oh. You know that one, right? Anyway, um, Moo Goo Gai Pan. These are words that are the, that just, you can talk gibberish in Scientology to help you learn your TRs. And one of the things written down is some gum war su up. That's not a sentence. That's like written like Chinese, S-U-M. Anyway, so uh, at any rate, so I'm in there and I'm fucking crying and shitting and like blah, blah, blah. So finally I stop and I, and I toe the line and I'm like, thank you. Okay, good. You know? And then about four years later, in some event, uh, um, COB, David Miscavige says, hey, there's been this big breakthrough in this golden age of tech. Fucking piece of shit. They, uh, uh, they, they, and uh, one of the things is, here's the real thing. On, people have been doing the improper acknowledgement. You're supposed to have, it says, appropriate acknowledgement. And they have LRH on tape saying, you know, somebody says, off with your head. And he goes, my God, that's the right way to do it. So here I was, this guy, first day of school, and I had it right. Now, cut two. You're asking me how I got out. So I'm in the fucking thing, and they keep telling me, I got to do this action, and I got to do this, and you got to do this sec checking, and all this shit. And I'm like, you fucking people. I wouldn't show up here if I wasn't ready. And there would be sec checking, which is basically asking me for my crimes and charging me thousands. I probably paid 50 grand, excuse me, in, 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 in sec checks to get this shit together because everything was fucked up, so it must be that I'm, I'm fucked up. And I kept saying, these sec checks are killing me. And this is the standard tech now. This is the golden age of tech. And I finally just said, you know something, motherfuckers? I don't care. You could get LRH to fly down here back from fucking Target 2 and tell me that I am fucking doing it wrong. I am not going in session and doing this shit. You guys are fucking killing me. I am here to tell you, you're fucking me up. So I'm out of here until you fucking wake up, okay? And then they come back to my house and they're offering me free auditing. I say, show me where free auditing is standard. You're not giving me standard tech. Now you want to fix it by more unstandard shit? Get the fuck out of here. You ask Griffey Blythe and the whole rest of those motherfuckers at AO if this is a lie. It's the fucking truth. And I'm out. And then they call and I just went on course because I couldn't take any more of this fucking auditing. It was killing me. So then they come out with this thing. And they, Jason, you have to see this. I wouldn't even go to events, you know? Because me, I'm at events, everybody's like, hey, how you doing? And I go, good. I just couldn't fucking lie anymore. I'm ready to fucking die, you know? I, and I told them, I'm not going. I can't participate. Because my role was like Jason Begay. I couldn't be like, yeah, well, I'll tell you the truth. I'm fucked up. I hate OT5. And everything's going fucking shitty. And it's fucking not working. And it's costing me a shitload of money. And I'm more unhappy than I've ever been in my entire life fucking life. What would happen if you spoke truthfully? Well, I would tell that truth. I would talk to RTC and all these things, but it's bad PR. It's none of anybody else's business. You're not supposed to talk about your case. So this is going on, honey, this is going on for, I was in Scientology maybe 10, 11 years, the last eight years like that, okay? And I'm paying fucking money. Maybe I paid a million fucking dollars. I don't know. I don't even keep track. I just said, what the, okay. Here, another fucking thing. This is going to work. You think so? Yeah, we finally got it. So anyway, on this fucking thing, I'm out of thing, and I'm doing course, and I'm just off auditing lines, you know? And then you've got to see this thing, Jason. He's going to fucking key you out. And I go in, and they show me this fucking... Uh, uh, and I'm looking at all these people who are on OT7, and they're going nuts with the sec checks, too. And I'm like, this is fucking crazy. These people, like, you know, they're supposed to be home auditing and then they have to go to flag every six months and they're there for like six fucking weeks. How are you supposed to? What are you, crazy? And they're coming home like, uh, uh, I had a really good six months check. I mean, these fucking, I said, I mean, it's just as clear as day. I tell you, this is not fucking standard. 
Scientology is not supposed to make you worse. I saw I was experiencing it and watching it. So now they come out, and this is two, three years. And this little mistake probably made the church about $500 million. And then about $500 million later, COB gives a fucking briefing on the free wins, and this is what they show me. It's arbitrary, it's canceled. It's an arbitrary, is what they say. So in other words, all this SEP checking was an arbitrary. And through his research and looking into things and rechecking all the LRH's notes, they realized they made a mistake. And so now I don't have to do the SEC check. Aren't you happy, Jason? And all these people, like on 7, like a bunch of fucking idiots, were like, arbitraries are canceled. I can just go on, and it's going to save me about 50 grand a year and all this shit. And it's like, wow. And me, I'm like, you think that's supposed to make me fucking happy? I feel like you should have a fucking apology. I said, if I were COB and I made that mistake, I wouldn't go, arbitrary is canceled. I say, I made a fucking mistake. I am sorry. And I'd make up the fucking damage. I'd pay. My fucking mistake made me 500 fucking million dollars, and you don't fucking even say you're sorry? You say, guess what? And this is what the fucking thing does. It just plays the same game over and over again. And this, when I go in now to the Congresses, the Congresses, I, toward the end of this eight years, they say, the, and I'm like off auditing. You know, I finished, uh, you know, OT5 finally, and I just said, I don't want any more of this shit. They, and they, they, nobody even said take OT7, because apparently I'm in the middle of four different fucking actions, and nobody knows what to do, you know? So I'm fucking in the middle of L10, you know? I mean, I can tell you about L10 is, is a story in itself. L10 is a story. So just know that they use my fucking wins on the L's. And the L's are what fucked me up in Scientology.